Let's say that you have service A and B, the order service and fulfillment service. Instead of the order service posting a message to the API of the fulfillment service, let's say that you have the order service emit an event, order created. Maybe it puts in a Kafka, SQS, I don't know, some sort of broker. And the fulfillment service subscribes to that and is notified when an order is created and it begins the fulfillment process. Now let's say that you have an analytics service that also cares about that and also subscribes to that and does something with that. Now, what we're discussing here is an event-driven architecture because the flow of your execution, all the things that are happening in your process are being driven by these events that are posted to topics and you have consumers that care about those events and execute something. That's event-driven architectures. And you have multiple flavors of that. Maybe, you know, you, the order service emits an order created event and the fulfillment service then has to call the API to actually get the order, or maybe you encode that order in the event itself so that the fulfillment service, when it reads the message uh, about order created, it doesn't have to call the API. There are multiple ways to do this, but they're all basically event-driven architectures. Event sourcing, on the other hand, has nothing to do with that. Event sourcing, in a nutshell, it means, imagine that you have the order entity you know, in your table, the orders table, and you have all of the data about that order, and you have the status of the order, and you have all these things. Imagine that you throw that away, and instead of having that, you have a collection of events, you know, order created, order updated, order paid, order prepared, order shipped, order delivered. You store all these events. Now, you could recreate the order, the original order object by folding on those events or reducing. You take all of the events and you go through them and you apply each event and then you end up with this order object. Now, if you've done Redux, maybe in React or something like that, where you are consuming events and then you're emitting or you're creating new states uh, that are immutable and all these things, well, that's kind of like the gist of event sourcing. Now, I said that you have to throw the orders table away. That's not exactly true. You can have a combination of both, but the test to know if you have an event source architecture is if I were to lose all that state, all that derived or calculated state, and I just had the events, could I rebuild it from my uh, events and arrive to the same state. So obviously you have to put a lot of thought and a lot of effort in understanding how and which kind of events you need to fire in order to achieve that property. Now, event sourcing is not something you generally wanna do to your entire architecture. You probably wanna focus and isolate that in parts where it makes sense. Like if you want an example of something that is naturally like an event sourced system, think about your bank account, right? You have your balance, but if you didn't have your balance and you had all your transactions coming in and the money leaving your account and you were to like just iterate through all of them, you could derive the balance, right? Uh, maybe you want to store the balance for the sake of you, you don't want to iterate through all of your uh, transactions through all of history to arrive to your actual balance. So you want to have some pre-calculated stuff. But in the end, in an event source system, when you have like an order stable and when you have all these things, it's more for the purpose of not having to calculate all of that again and it's sort of like convenient, right? You get your account and you get your balance quickly, but, but you could throw it away potentially and you could just rebuild it. This is like the more pure approach, but you could have, you know, some sort of approaches in the middle, like maybe you have a, your state from the beginning of the day and then throughout that whole day you have the events and then the next day you merge that, you aggregate all that and then you start again and so, something like that. If you wanna learn more about this, there's a very good talk by Martin Fowler uh, that I'll link up there, I'll, I'll just, and, and in the description. You should watch that, it's long. This is like the TLDR version. You, It's important that you know that event driven architectures and event sourcing are not the same thing. You know, you could have event sourcing and not fire off events to other systems. So they're not really tied to each other. They could happen together and that's why people tend to confuse them.